Chapter 34 After her next session with the Amine, who insisted on being called Karen, JV felt better. She was steadier than after their first talk, and she realized she should have talked to someone a long time ago, but who? She still couldn't tell her family, she didn't know if she would ever be able to. Until Rebecca, she hadn't had friends she could talk to. There was no one she was close enough to share secrets with, even little secrets, much less her secret horror. Karen had said when she met with her on Friday, that it was okay that she didn't want to talk about it, but treating her attack like a secret was only letting it hurt her more. She said it would help to tell someone she was close to. Someone other than Steve. JV wasn't so sure. Saturday afternoon, she was in Rebecca's living room with Rebecca. Steve and Nick were busy in the con's office. She didn't know what they were doing, she hadn't cared enough to ask. The two women sat together, laptops open in front of them, as they worked on Christmas shopping. Do you ever wish you could just go into the store and wander through until you find what you're after? JV asked. Not really, Rebecca shrugged. I hate crowds, and it's always in the back of my mind that someone from my old Chanet will see me. That they'll try to take me back. JV frowned. Why would they do that? Rebecca gave her a kind smile. Didn't Steve tell you? Tell me what? How I got to be here. JV gave her friend a confused look. He hasn't said a word. I shouldn't worry anymore, but I do. She took a deep breath and let it out slowly, trying to figure out where to start. When I met Nick, I'd been on the run from my Chanet for about a year. My father was the cadre. Was? JV asked. He may still be for all I know, I haven't spoken to any of them since I left, three and a half years ago. Anyway, I was living wild, as a cougar. I hadn't been in my human form in about six months when I wandered into his territory. He chased me down, caught me, convinced me to shift and offered me a shower. Oh my that shower was heaven. She closed her eyes and remembered for a moment. He convinced me that I was safe here. I didn't know if I could trust him, but I trusted my instincts. I told him I was running from an arranged marriage and that I wasn't going back. He said I didn't have to, I could stay with him. It took us less than a day to wind up in bed together. I almost sealed our mating that first night because I didn't know what I was doing. She smiled at the memory. Things moved extremely fast between Nick and I, and Steve wasn't nice about it, not at first. He softened somewhat when he found out what I was running from, and more after we sealed our mating even though that was still within a couple weeks of having met each other. When my father sent someone to take me, Steve met him with teeth and claws. He fought him off, as if he'd always approved of me. Nick sent my father's man back with a message. He told them I was staying, and the next person to try to take me away would die, and he'd report the whole thing to the council. I haven't heard from them since. Still, it's hard to forget that year I was on the run. They tried to capture and take me back several times. I just got lucky. That's what finally drove me to live wild. I knew it was the only way. They couldn't trace me unless they were physically on my trail. Wow, JV said surprised. I had no clue. Rebecca smiled. Life here's been good for me. I hope it'll be as good for you. She laid her hand on JV's. I know you've had some issues in the past. I know Karen was here to talk to you the other day, and you saw her again yesterday. I won't push, but want you to know that I'm here if you want to talk. I know first-hand life isn't always what you want it to be. I've sure learned that the hard way, JV muttered. I'm sorry you had to go through that. My clan never made much of mating, but they don't do the arranged marriage thing. I didn't know anyone still did. Not many do. The council frowns on it but it still happens. I don't know what to say. 
Don't have to say anything. It haunts me a little sometimes, but for the most part I've put it behind me. I hope someday I can be as casual about my attack. Do you mind if I ask what kind of attack? Rebecca watched her friend. JV bit her lower lip and looked away, not entirely comfortable, but Karen had said it would help. She took a deep breath and laid it out as plainly as she could. Oh dear, Rebecca responded and laid a hand on JV's arm. Who helped you through? She looked at her friend, then dropped her eyes to the hand on her arm. No one. I didn't tell anyone. My roommates were gone, and everything that showed had healed by the time they got back. You never told anyone? Rebecca's concern was obvious from the frown she wore. Not until a few days ago when Steve worked it out of me. I did my best to forget it and go on with my life. It was how I dealt with everything. The attack Steve's leaving, any problem I've had, I've ignored it and moved on. Did it work? For a while but it failed in the long term. She gave Rebecca a wry smile. I'm sorry. Rebecca gave her a hug. Not knowing what else to say, they dropped the heart to heart and went back to shopping until it was time to make dinner. This is a lot of food. JV looked at the dishes they'd laid out on the kitchen island. She knew there was more in the oven and on the stovetop that wouldn't be ready for a while yet. Well, we've got four more people coming and two of them are teenagers. I've seen those two eat. They'll put away as much food as the rest of us combined. Rebecca didn't seem to mind, only to want to be prepared. They were ready when a vehicle pulled up in front of the house. Together the girls headed for the living room as Steve opened the front door. The guests hurried from the cold, and Steve took his place beside JV and introduced her to the cadre and the rest of his family. Jade, this is Julio Roberts, second in charge in the clan. You've met Karen and these are their children, Ricky and Izzy. He motioned to each of the teenagers in turn, then dropped his hands on her shoulders and addressed the older man. This is JV. I'm hoping, eventually, she'll be my mate. JV turned and looked at Steve with wide eyes, shocked at how he'd changed his introduction. She smiled up at him, then turned back to the cadre. It's nice to meet you, sir. She extended one hand to shake his, but Steve grabbed her wrist instead. No offense, sir, but right now touching most males hurts Jade, and the scent of her pain drives me to the edge of my control. Until we can figure out how to either stop it, or I can gain better control, it's best if we avoid the situation. Julio looked back and forth between the two of them for a moment, then his gaze flicked to his wife for an instant before going back to Steve. That's fine. He turned his attention back to JV. It's nice to meet you, ma'am. I hope you find what you need. JV said hello to the kids, both of whom were teenagers. The boy was obviously older than the girl, though they both looked old enough to drive. They sat in the front room and talked about the holidays, pack business, and town happenings until dinner was ready. Then Rebecca and JV finished getting everything on the table and called the others. As everyone settled around the table, Nick stood back up. Rebecca and I have an announcement. You've probably already figured it out, but I'm gonna make a big deal about it anyway. He looked at his mate, his eyes shining with love and happiness. JV wondered if she'd ever feel that way. If Steve would ever look at her like that. She had no clue what Nick was about to share, but she didn't let on. She remained quiet while waiting for the announcement. Rebecca is pregnant. We're gonna have a baby. Nick's grin was so wide it almost split his face in two. His happiness was infectious. Beside him, Rebecca sat smiling happily, though not as effusively as her mate. JV couldn't help herself. She stood, rushed to her friend and hugged her. Congratulations. You'll be a wonderful mother. She moved to hug Nick too but Steve's growl stopped her in her tracks. 
She turned and looked at him, eyes wide. He flushed, all eyes turning toward him. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I just thought about the pain touching him would cause her, and it came out. He ducked his head. I can't apologize enough. No harm done, man? Nick was good-natured, still glowing from his announcement. Congratulations to you both, Steve said. I've known for a while, but didn't want to say anything until you were ready. He held out one hand for JV. She moved to his side. That's wonderful news, Karen said. Way to go, man. Julio clapped one hand on Nick's back. The children were quiet, as if they didn't know what to say, so they said nothing. How did you know? Her scent changed. It was just before you got here, you wouldn't have noticed. Thanks. I felt stupid for not knowing. There's no reason for that. There was no way you could have known. He served himself a helping of mashed potatoes from the bowl being passed around. Conversation turned to children and babies. They ate and talked after dinner before the family left, and everyone called it an evening.